Yesterday, we introduced you to the winners of a mega million contest that is no game of chance. Yeah, the smartest people from around the world competing for big money. In 2017, Sesame Street Workshop won this first of its kind contest, allowing them to expand the Sesame brand in worn, torn countries overseas, teaching kids how to cope and heal through the magic of Muppets. WGN's Julie Unruh is here with this year's final. It's pretty cool. It is. They are back at it again, and it's always a great mix of kids contestants, that's for sure. Some are tackling policy to solve a major crisis somewhere in our world. Others are using science. All of them are using their brains to not only identify a problem, but to solve it. Sounds simple, right? It's anything but, especially when you have the best and brightest competing for a hundred million bucks. Hello, no? He likes them. It is so crushing, so life destroying for people. Do you know anybody who drinks the water? No. We've simply gone out and asked the whole world, tell us what you would do with $100 million. Protecting more of the ocean is like an insurance policy for humanity. This is the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation's second competition. The goal is to solve a critical problem of our time. 800 applicants narrowed down to just six, hoping to win the purse that'll make their dream of curing, cleaning, eradicating, solving something more real than ever. It's called 100 and Change. Homelessness robs the most vulnerable members of our communities. A panel judging these finalists on four criteria. There has to be a real impact that's evidence-based. It has to be feasible, and it must be able to be sustained over time. Let's start with breathing new life. It's addressing an oxygen shortage in low-income communities. In total, only 10% of people who actually need oxygen will ultimately get oxygen. Children in a healthcare setting are in dire need of more oxygen in neglected parts of our world. If your most vulnerable neighbors are falling through the cracks. What about ending homelessness once and for all? An audacious goal, maybe, especially when you consider 1.5 million men, women and children experience homelessness each year. Community Solutions takes a data-driven approach of tracking individuals, and it's working. Already 13 communities have ended chronic or veteran homelessness and more than 40 others are seeing steady reductions. It has been estimated that medical knowledge is doubling every three and a half years. Project ECHO is sharing ever-changing health care information that could be the difference between life and death in certain parts of our world. What this has created is a network, a platform, that relies on digital technologies, not only computers, but also mobile phones, which are really ubiquitous now all over the world, uh, to, help to help connect local health care providers with the expertise to address the problems they're facing on the ground to improve the quality of medical care. Providing people with information that they can use. There's even a contestant vying for dollars to institute local news where there is none. Our solution is to have a reporter in every county in the United States. Imagine living in a community where there's no one to tell your story where there is no radio station, no television station, no newspaper. Who do you ask, where do I go to get a COVID-19 test? How are they handling funerals? Is my daycare center properly licensed? Report for America believes when people pay attention to local issues, voter registration goes up, so does government accountability, among other things. We have been over exploiting the ocean for too long. Pristine Seas is helping protect our oceans through policy. They need more money to do it better and do it faster. If we want to prevent a massive extinction of species and the collapse of our life support system, if we want the ocean to continue helping us absorb much of our carbon pollution, we need to protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. Right now, we're only protecting 7% of the ocean. This National Geographic initiative says science tells us we have only 10 years to reverse this catastrophic trend. So there's one mosquito called Aedes aegypti that transmits a range of different viruses to people. And lastly, an applicant who's taking a bite out of the mosquito problem in order to save lives. The World Mosquito Program competed in the MacArthur Foundation's 2017 competition and is back again as a finalist in 2020. 
And what it's focused on is reducing mosquito-borne diseases. 40% of the world's population, they say, is at risk of getting a viral disease that mosquitoes transmit, like yellow fever, dengue fever, or the Zika virus. When we put the bacterium into the mosquito, the viruses couldn't grow any longer in the mosquito. So we're seeding uh, populations of mosquitoes with our own mosquitoes that contain Wolbachia. We're able to spread the mosquitoes across very large areas very quickly. Once the mosquitoes have it, they're protected from being able to transmit viruses. And when they're protected, the humans are protected as well. All amazing ideas, each one claiming to be feasible and durable, but only one can win. And that's the hardest part. This is, without a doubt, an inspiring and motivating competition. I swear, if you're having a down day, need to pick me up, take a look at what all these incredibly smart innovators are dreaming up in their boardrooms and their laboratories. You can head to our website for a look at these finalists as well to see what they are dreaming up and making come true. The amazing part about this, too, is that there is one winner, but there are a lot of philanthropists who are watching this crew. That is true. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So not everybody's out of the game. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if how not, they can just come back the following year they or a can. couple years later. Yeah. I should mention, too, the winner announced next April. Stay okay. tuned. Stay All tuned. right, we'll be watching. Thanks, you Julie, bet. thank you.